and you thought vinyl left. You're listening to the Vinyl Community Podcasts. Everything vinyl. Buddies, back in the building again. Thanks for joining us here for another conversation on Vinyl Community Podcast. This is Concert Buddy. I am joined, newcomer to the channel and maybe to the vinyl community on YouTube. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Vinyl Chef Steve, how are you doing today, sir? I'm wonderful. How are you, Chance? Living the dream like vanilla ice cream, my friend. (laughs) All right. Well, Steve is joining us because, and and we'll get into this in a little bit, he recently put out a video that I was was really drawn to because I actually had a lot of shared sentiment in what he was conveying about unity and the vinyl community and treating people with respect and so much more so that's what we call the deep tease steve we're gonna we plant that seed and then we're gonna do all the like formality stuff and then the the listener hopefully wants to come and stay listen for it but yeah yeah um let's do the easy stuff first and let's just kind of talk about your experience high level on on youtube and the vinyl community a little homework i did it looks like at least the channel you have now, 2017, but is that just how long you've had the account? Tell me about it. Um, it was probably, uh, might have been another account. Uh, I don't think I started in 2017. I might have joined YouTube in two, 2017. But as far as the Vinyl Chef Steve um, channel went, that was, I think, 2019 or late 2019. It was during like the first maybe two months of the of the pandemic when mm. When everybody went on lockdown, um, I was in the retail business, so I actually stayed home from work for about two months, just like testing the waters, finding out more about the virus. And, you know, my wife's a a nurse of 30 years, so Mm -hmm. she was working in it. And so she was getting information and finding out, you know, whether because in the retail business, you're you're surrounded by people, you know. And they hadn't even come out with the, the masking concept yet. So we were still going to work barefaced and people were getting sick. And mm. so, yeah, um, that's when I was encouraged by my wife. She says, oh, why don't you start a YouTube channel? You've always wanted to do it, but it started around food. Um, but I called it Vinyl Chef Steve because I've always, you know, records have always been around when there's food. You know, we're always putting on a vinyl record when we're eating dinner or when I'm cooking, I'm playing vinyl records. That's why, that's why I hate 45 RPMs because I can't get anything done, you know, sure, sure. can't even eat, you know, half a meal before I have to get up and go change the record. Sure, sure. Uh, so that's how that got started, you know? And then I basically started with, um, with creating, uh, sharing recipes. Okay. Um, it was, it was very amateur, but I had no idea about the copyright, you know? So I was pairing, you know, food with Music with problem. records you know yes. if i like when i did a i did a um a broccoli um cheddar you know soup a broccoli cheddar cheese soup um and it was like you know cheesy wonder i had stevie wonder you know with <laughs> how i was playing you know i called the recipe cheesy wonder so just fun stuff like that i had a, i did a um another one with a, a white wine uh, that's from the region of Kinsey in France. It's a Loire Valley uh, region. And um, it looks like Quincy. So what record do you think I pair with that? Quincy Jones. Yeah. 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 You know, so I was just having fun like that. Yeah. And soon enough, I realized that my videos were never going to be monetized or, you know, they might not even get the visibility that I wanted because of the copyright. Mm. So I had to stop doing it that way. Was there was there other channels uh, either from the food realm or even from the vinyl community now that you would kind of watch before it was a kind of the like I won't say inspiration but at least a, a something to kind of give you a framework of like how other people do it? Yeah, there's just a little guy. He's just a little like channel called Emerald Agassi. <laughs> <laughs> how do you spell the, the Food Network, man? That, that's what inspired me a long, long time ago, back in like 2000 and the late nineties, you know? Um, but as far as YouTube channels went, I didn't even do any research. I barely knew how to even navigate YouTube for my own viewing pleasure. Cause mm. I just didn't, I just didn't use it. So it was a really quick learning curve. You know, I, I mean, in the beginning I didn't even have a, an editor. So my videos were all choppy. I didn't even know how to do them lengthwise. I was doing them long wise, you know, 
So yeah, the beginning is ugly. You know, I, I kind of want to per some of the recommendations of the pros delete those videos. But oh, man, yeah. No way, man. I want them to be there. You know, I mainly yeah. did it for a food diary for my daughter. Okay. So that, you know, when I move on, go to the stairway to heaven, you know, I'm not one of those parents that, you know, she has to say, Oh, he said a, a little of this and, and, and then a little of that, but, no recipes. No, I'm not going to be that guy. So no, it's, very inter it's interesting you say that because when I talked to Kozlov, uh, he said something kind of similar about, you know, mm -hmm. like obviously he really likes music and yada yada. But another part of his motivation was to kind of leave like a, a, a running diary of his thoughts on music and pass right. on something to his son, right? Which mm -hmm. I hadn't really thought about before because that wasn't necessarily one of my initial motivations. But in hindsight, like it makes a lot of sense, and especially if it's something like that. It's, yeah. so easy, it's so easy to like lose papers, right? If you're writing down the recipes or information, my mom's got a, a book of all her internet passwords this big. And yeah. the fact that it's like it's centralized in one place and accessible, mm -hmm. I don't see yeah. YouTube going anywhere, right? I think it's a really right. smart idea. Right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, then it just snowballed from there. Eventually, um, I I started, you know, feeling like because I couldn't, utilize the records with the recipes the way I originally wanted to. I still wanted to share the music. So that's when I just started sharing my collection and, mm. you know, and then I just kind of looked at, to see what other channels were doing on YouTube to get people to, to come and, and look at their content, you know, and that's basically how I formulated what I do. And then I just try to come up with my own creative ideas and concepts and, and, Post them. That's how I came up with the idea for the, you know, the unity and in, in community um, video that I did. Because I'm always thinking about stuff. I'm, I'm like, my disease is creativity. It's, it's extreme. This is just what you guys see here with the cooking and the vinyl. It's just, it's the tip of the iceberg with what I do. You know. Nice. Yeah. When, uh, when you first started watching other channels right mm -hmm. kind of getting some ideas and and also yeah. learning on your own like you said those first videos were just they're all like bambi legs like even even yeah. mine, like I, I actually totally. was one, i saw like the thumbnails of my original videos today i was just looking for something yeah brutal brutal right but yeah. I, I but i'm a firm you gotta keep them there just for yeah. prosperity if anything else right but but as you start immersing yourself and be like how are the people doing this or YouTube is famous for suggesting things right yeah. what were what were some of those first channels that uh, kind of came across your dossier and 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 really kind of resonated with you good bad or indifferent um man, let me think I'm trying to think when it came to food uh, gosh I can't even remember the names of them but uh, like Jamie Oliver. You know, oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'd watch his stuff. Um, uh, Barefoot Contessa, I think she had some things on there too. Um, as far as the record videos go, the only channel that comes to mind that I started like really watching and, and kind of grew on me because I, I liked what they were doing is guess who? The Jazz Bums. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the one the one channel that expelled me from the vinyl community <laughs> year, that got me completely you know oh no obliterated. but well yeah, I, I i enjoyed them i liked all the guys you know i used to mm -hmm. send messages to chris because he was always drinking his beers and you know yeah i wanted to find out if you know pepe could give me some implants and yeah i mean i just they were interesting characters i liked those three those three guys, the original guys. And then they started introducing some other people. And I don't know, I didn't, you know, you can't get along with everybody. And some people just rubbed me the wrong way because it wasn't the same dynamic. Those three guys were super humble and really kind and nice and, you know, outgoing. And, um, and then they introduced some other personalities to it. And it just, that's when I kind of, I still watched, you know, they were still, I used to communicate with, um, with Mike a little bit. We would, mm -hmm. you know, share, um, stories about our finds and, and, you know, he would comment on my videos and at times, and I would comment on his, his videos. And so, yeah, that was probably the first one. And then, uh, Mazzy, I watched Mazzy for a little while. I watched what he did. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think who else. And I, then I checked in with uh, Michael 45 and, sure. Um, that one fellow you had on, 
gosh, I can't remember what his name was. Robert Frank Landry. Robert Robert, Robert Fithen. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Fithen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he always caught my attention because he was just the no holes barred, like <laughs> says what he wants, very mm-hmm. assertive, comes across like, hey man, you either like it or you don't. This is just me. This is how I am. But he was genuine, you know, it didn't mm-hmm. seem like a shtick. It just seemed like that's who he was. And he always had some some neat information and you know. So yeah, those are some of the some of the sites that that I think I originally started looking at. Well, you bring you bring up an interesting topic, and we won't we won't tell the whole story, but yeah, that's kind of how we, you and I connected because right. friendly with the jazz bumps too, mm-hmm. and there there was a, a record that came out that had varying opinions, and yeah. uh, you know as and we'll kind of get into that as we talk about your 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 video the, the unity in the vinyl community, but. Some some uh, two dimensional conversations about opinions about the the the, the particular album mm-hmm. and uh, you know anyway long story short that's how I find your channel uh, and then you and I had an exchange in the comments yeah uh, and it was a little terse at first right I think you would yeah. admit that. Okay. Um, but what's interesting is that we you know and and this is kind of one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you on this project is. It's very it's very unusual for people to like start off that way and then find common ground. At least it feels like it lately. And I think that yeah. um, I think it's testament to you. And, and I'm not to my own horn, but just you know, like yeah. okay, a, a disagreement can stay agreement to an extent, but also finding common ground so you can just be like, hey, let's just be civil about things, right? So, right. but um, anybody anybody who's married, chance knows <laughs> what that means. Knows how oh, it works. I, if you're married yeah, yeah. and you don't know how to do that, then you're you're not going to be married for very long. That's true. That's a true story. My wife, my wife or, would attest. Or if you have an employer, you know, yeah. if you have a manager, if to be honest, it should be a part of our of our makeup as individuals. It shouldn't make any difference whether it's our wife, our employer, or someone that's you know 500 miles away um, behind a computer screen. Yep. You know, if you really really want to keep the peace with people and not leave people, you know, thinking negative thoughts or have negative energy in their lives or towards you, you try to resolve matters. Just that's just the way I've always been that way. I hate having, you know, like poop on my shoes, you know? Right. They open ended like for lack of a better word, drama, right? Yeah. Um well that that is a great segue into part, the big principal reason. Well you made this video and like I said in the open mm-hmm. It really resonated with me on a lot of levels. Kind of one, what we just talked about there is like, you know, people disagreeing for whatever reasons and then just like taking it next level and then it becomes personal. It's kind of weird. And we'll yeah. kind of talk about that. But yeah. um, your video is called Keeping Unity in mm-hmm. the Vinyl Community. And mm-hmm. I'm just guessing, but you capitalized unity and then you capitalized the unity piece of community in your title. I'm assuming right. that was intentional to kind of tie those together. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just think that, you know, that's what community is. It's it's a group of people coming together as as one, as a whole. And, you know, they tend to have uh, similar um, likes. You know, they tend to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They tend to gather for the same reason. A, a similar foundation, like-mindedness. Like, vinyl you know. community, you know, the cooking community, there's all these so. We, our community is vinyl, mm-hmm. vinyl records and music, which is, you know, part of it. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to point out that that's what it's supposed to be like. And, and, you know, I didn't feel like there was any unity really in the vinyl community because it seems like everybody is out for themselves. Mm-hmm. And reciprocity is a rare quality in people. And, you know, I, I do a lot of thinking about why, you know, you, you subscribe to one channel and they don't subscribe back. Mm-hmm. Um, you watch their videos and you comment on their videos, but they don't comment or like your videos. That's uh, rampant. I mean, and the bigger the channel, the bigger the channel, the more rampant it is. Um, and I get it because after sitting around thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I have a hard time. I mean, I got a full time job. I have a, my wife. I have my house, two houses. I have to take care of business and stuff. And mm-hmm. I mean, and I'm having trouble. I have 1,500 subscribers. I don't know how many of those are. Probably more of those are food subscribers than than record subscribers. Um, if every one of those people 
commented on my videos, I don't know how the heck I'd be able to respond to everybody. Sure. And to to reciprocate their watching or viewing of my channel, if they had channels, how do I determine which people that I have to support and watch? So it's a tough it's a, it's a delicate balance. It's a and I think rope, you know. Yeah, you know, you talk about larger channels, like Melinda Murphy comes to mind. And that's yeah. one thing I really admire about how she goes about her business is that she takes the time to reply to every kind. And I can only imagine because her view count and people who comment takes yeah. a lot of work, like you said, and, and finding that time, right. that balance of reciprocity, like you're talking about, like mm -hmm. you comment on somebody's and then, if you know, it's, it is a little strange. That was one thing when I first started yeah. doing this, because before I did my own videos, I was a creeper. I'd lurk and I'd watch these channels and you're and still a creeper chance. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, listen, the restraining order said 500 feet, Steve, but no, uh, <laughs> of course. No. Um, but I would watch these videos, but I was also raised like if I saw something, I was like, I don't agree with that. Or I just wouldn't comment. Yeah. I just wouldn't comment really in general. Right. But then I noticed that, you know, when you start making this, this, this content and start putting yourself out there, the, the, the back and forth exchange is, part of the bag and part of the bag. And, and it's actually something I didn't really anticipate is that, that connectivity, the, the good yeah. thing. Right. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, to your point, I mean, I can't imagine a, a channel, some of these, I mean, not even vinyl community. Some, I mean, surely Mr. Beast with like millions of subscribers, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's a wild concept, but. And, and at some point, and at some point these people are doing it full time, which allows you the sure. time to do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know what Melinda's, lifestyle is it looks like she's married and like just from what you can see like it looks like her husband does pretty well or she i've never heard her talk about if she has a career outside of you know doing that but if you're home full time seven days a week and you don't have any kids or you know your your life is more free to work on your channel then of course you're going to be able to do that you're going to have mm -hmm. that time and again when you invest that time it pays you back tenfold, you know, because your, your viewers, they come back to you because they like the interaction. Well, it's a, it is a community in and of itself. And I, yeah. I used to, to be honest with you, I'll kind of tell myself some of the bigger channels to your point, mm -hmm. I try to interact with them and I wouldn't yeah. get anything back. And I'm like, okay, you know, forget this guy or this gal, yeah. or whatever. But yeah. the reality is it's a number. And honestly, like, the expectation changed once I started doing it myself. Cause again, I'm very, you know, small, small fish in this thing, but to understand at least from their level, 40, 60, 80 plus thousand subscribers. I mean, when some of these channels put out a video, they've got 10,000 views yeah. in a matter of hours. Right. So to anyway, yeah. I had a newfound appreciation for like not taking that piece personally, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was the human nature, but it's also like, Hey, I put in the effort to say nice job or whatever. And yeah. to your point, when you don't get that back, it is a little confusing because outside of YouTube world, the real world where, where we mm -hmm. live, mm -hmm. if somebody compliments you, usually like, thank you. You know what I mean? It's, it's more yeah. direct. So right. it, is, it is kind of weird for sure. Yeah. And again, in, in real life, I mean, have you ever had a, a, a friend that you were good friends with growing up, like really, really close through high school and everything? And then you graduate and you go your separate ways and you try to keep contact with that person. And, you know, every time you call them, they say, oh, I'm in a meeting. Can I call you back? And then they never call you back. I'm in a meeting. Can I call you back? Mm -hmm. They are always in the meeting. They're the CEO of their own company, which they're the only employee and they have no revenue. They're just sitting in a Starbucks on a computer trying to make something happen. But every time you call them, it's the same thing. I'm in a meeting. I'm in a meeting. And they're not even, they're not in a meeting. They're just, they read a book that, you know, instructed them to tell people that. So they think they're successful. Sure. You know? So do you keep friends like that? I don't. So when that happens on, you know, social media, it's the same thing. I'm not going to invest time into other people who are not investing time into me. Yeah, that makes sense. Just how it, it's, you know, you're a fool if, you, if you're running around chasing a bunch of people for nothing. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the video itself. Sure. And you hit on some really interesting points. Like, well, first of all, you know, you've done other videos on your channel. Uh, one of which recently, and I'd highly recommend people talk about uh, or check it out was your, your humorous take on what you said earlier about putting on a 45 uh, RPM record <laughs> and yeah. starting something. And then literally as soon as you start cutting the potatoes or 
many other things. I'll leave it. Uh, I'll leave it cutting that. the logs, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, but but uh, I think it was after that you came out with this video. Please don't edit that part, Chance. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I, I want people to see it because I, I again telling on myself. I laughed a couple times. But, <laughs> but um, what was the motivation to put this to video of you know the things you were noticing and just being like, hey, like. Again, I, not not to yeah. generalize it, but just like let's just be more civil. Like you know, again, we have a common ground of music. Let's be nice to each other. Why did that? Why were you called to action or stirred to action to make this video? Because when I watch other people's videos, I listen very intently, and I I hear things that make me say, "Why does this person think that that they can send that out into the community?" Because there's a whole bunch of people that that do that. Mm. And they should be able to do that. There's no rules or regulations or laws that say that, you know, if uh, someone does a challenge of your 10 most listened to records, that if you want to do 12, because you just can't, you know, leave these two out, that you should be criticized or made to feel like a moron or made to feel like, you, you know, you, you can't follow instructions. I will admit one guy said something really funny. And I'm all about humor, even if it's about something that I disagree with. If it's funny, it's funny. You just can't deny it. But this cat said, he posted on some guy's site, one thing that, that this uh, 10, record, 10 most records I've listened to has taught me is that nobody in the vinyl community can count because <laughs> everybody was doing like 10, 15, 12 records. You know, it's just I thought that was hilarious. It was so true. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And so I, I saw that. You know, when I see stuff like that, I start to, I, I guess I feel like th those are the things that we should teach people to just leave alone. You know, just let people be, man. Just, you know, it could be anything. It could be somebody criticizing. Uh, I got criticized for having um, a channel that involved food and, you know, recipes and records. Yeah. You know, I, but that was uh, probably in retaliation. But still, it was a, a way to poke fun at somebody for that because they're not doing something. They're not falling in line with with the the you know quote, the quote, sure. the top dogs with what the most successful people are doing. I, you know, so it's just that I just I get tired of hearing other people tell other people what to do. And it's funny because when I when I I did call some people out um, or that actual thing that uh about the 10 records mm -hmm. you know people showing 12 or 15 um i made a mention i think of that in one of my videos and somebody had seen that and and they they kind of they took it the wrong way i mean i wasn't i wasn't calling anybody out specifically you know like i wasn't mentioning a person sure. um there was a few people that i had seen done it so i was speaking to the masses and whoever else might do that in the future and some of those people or one of those people person accidentally took it like I was speaking directly to right. them mm -hmm. and, it, and it wasn't, it was somebody that I actually really like mm -hmm. and that uh, we have a good relationship. And I'm like, no man, it wasn't, I wasn't referring to you at all. You know, I know when you said it, you, you were actually joking, you know? So it's, it's an easy place for things to get taken out of context. Yeah. The, the two, di the two dimensionality, Mm -hmm. of it. And I think that goes not just for this YouTube thing, but, you know, I think back 20 years ago when this, this style of communicating online started kind of taking shape with like message boards, chat yeah. rooms, that sort of thing. I think that's what kind of birthed the, even, right. even if you're writing emails, like corporate emails now or business yeah. emails, you have yeah. to be very deliberate and you're and intentional in how you word things because things can easily be misconstrued right taken out of context or whatever but one thing i wanted to hit on is as you said very early in that video and that's what really hooked me was you, you, it was basically like to anybody you do not have to justify your content to anyone right and i really firmly believe that because there are people that i subscribe to that i watch regularly and sometimes a video just doesn't hit with me on to the next, right? right. But it doesn't mean that you should only do this, you know, and I think that yeah. the echo chamber, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but the echo chamber of our culture now is that, you know, I don't like that. And I'm going to tell you about that. And if you don't, you know what I mean? And I don't know where yeah. that started, but I thought that was really uh, strong and powerful that you just for almost at the, at, the, at the beginning, just yeah. let off with your channel, your business. Well, you, you, know, you mentioned something in one of your last videos. Um, 
and and I experienced uh, a similar reaction from somebody when I first started doing sound comparisons. Um, I just you know I started doing them. I have a I have a decent setup. You know I have some like three thousand dollar speakers and mm -hmm. my turntable is just a basic Audio Technica LP one twenty. You know perfectly fine for oh, playing what I'm playing. Um, and I've got a nice, you know, nice tuner. And um, so I thought my system sounds good enough to do sound comparisons, to be able to hear the, the difference and nuances of the two different pressings. So I started to do them. And it wasn't, you know, long after that I started to get some comments from audio files telling me that, did you sound match? And I'm like, what sound match? You know, I had no clue. I've already admitted to not being an audiophile. Mm -hmm. um, and, but now after hearing what an audiophile, there's all these definitions, man. There's not even, a, which if you look it up in the de in dictionary, Webster's dictionary has a definition for it. If anybody believes in a dictionary anymore. Um, and it basically says that it's someone who's passionate about sound. Mm. That's all. Doesn't say you have to have a $125,000 turntable. <laughs> And the thing about your amplifier doesn't have to have blue, you know, illumination in the front or anything. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be really passionate and you have to, you know, that's what you seek. So you do things in order to achieve that, which in some cases means buying a $125,000 turntable to sure. some people, right? Who can afford it? So, um, but I, I was like, what the hell is sound match? And like, you know, I kind of took it a little personal. I'm like, why are you telling me that if I don't do that, then my sound Just qualify you? Yeah, they're not legitimate. So I went back and forth with them, and I said, look, technically, I can hear the difference, and if you can also hear the difference through YouTube, because people have already, I, I told them, people have mentioned they can hear which one sounds better to them through my channel, you know, and using my system with no sound matching. And he says, well, yeah, but technically you're still not doing it right. And you know, and I'm like, okay, look, I'm going to give it a try. I'm not one of those people that, you know, so stubborn and arrogant that I don't believe I can learn something from somebody else. So I put my ego aside and I said, all right, man, I went out, spent 60 bucks or 70 bucks on a little nice little DB meter. And I started to do that. And, you know, it's, I'll, I'll say it's more accurate than my ear only because my ears hear what they hear, but this hears, this tells me what it hears, mm -hmm. you know, so I can be precise according to a meter. And if that satisfies people, then great. I'm happy to do it. And so I, I eventually like you and I, I messaged the guy back and I thanked him for, for informing me. And I apologize for getting a little bit offense offended. You know, I just felt a little bit attacked, but Hey, now I'm cool. Thank you very much, buddy. And, you know, we went on our way. So, yeah, it's stuff like that, that sometimes it's just how you come across too, right? I mean, it, there's no tonality. Like right now, me and you, right. Right. you know, clearly when someone um, calls you a piece of shit in a live stream, I mean, there's no denying that. And they're angry. And, you know, some of the, some of the live streams that I see, they're volatile, man. They're like, they're, there's toxicity there mm -hmm. i mean you have to be careful it's like a, a minefield mm -hmm. you know wherever you step you don't know if that thing's going to go off and you're going to lose your left nut or i mean you just you got to really you know yeah, yeah, yeah step carefully with with certain people and i don't need that shit in my life man i'm not here for that you know so yeah it makes sense what uh another thing you talked about too that i really uh you know kind of connected with especially early in the video was talking about you know, people have different motivations, not just for this yeah. kind of community, YouTube, right. stuff, but, but also, you know, acknowledging that, but also like letting people, whatever their motivations are. Exactly. Be cool with it. Right. Because again, there are people. Freedom who, of enterprise, right? Right. Right. And, and I found that too, because why I may not agree with certain people's motivations or how right. they go about it at the end of the day, I'm, I don't think about it outside of a glance or outside of yeah. casual conversation or what have you. And yeah. some people to what, you know, what I've experienced, I'm sure you've experienced this too, Steve, right. that the people want to tell you what they think and, and yeah. it's okay to an extent, but when it crosses that line of, okay, opinion noted, but yeah. then, you know, the bully pulpit of, well, this is the only opinion. I think yeah. that's where, you know, and, and again, the judgment yeah. comes in. And, right. Oh, that's oh. where it gets, gets out of, out of, uh, out of, what's the word? Of, 
out of bounds, right? Out of line when people yeah. start to pass judgment on you and you know, name calling, whatever. I mean, there's people that I I can honestly say I I've never had the chance to um, make amends with that I've had altercations with on on YouTube. That seems like they could be perfectly nice people if you were you know if you knew them or were acquainted with them in a little bit more um, I don't know a little closer right. yeah closer way. Um, but like even though I I still have a sense of bitterness for certain people. Um, because of the difficulty that I've had with them in the past, I hear other people bash them for certain reasons. And I'm like, you know, that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold that against that guy. You know, who cares if he's here to, to sell records or, you know, that's, that's what his motivation is. If his motivation is here to, to, you know, draw people and audience to, to know that, that he buys and sells records and he's going to have auctions so be it. Good for right. him. And he's a businessman. He's smart. That's what you do. You find ways to monetize what you are, you know, your abilities and you take it to the market. And that's basically what, what he's doing. And we all I probably know who I'm talking about, but I've never, ever had the opportunity to even hit it off with that guy on a good note mm -hmm. because we started off on a little sour note and he took it to like a whole other level. Mm. That I never, never retaliated against. Somebody else did the retaliating for me. Thank you, Marius. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I can't say that I don't enjoy his videos, man, because I don't have to do shit. <laughs> you know. Um, well, you raise so you raise an interesting point though about the auctions, because that is that seems to be a very polarizing topic now, and I, I don't really understand it because you know, one, like you're talking about, somebody yeah. wants the channel, if that's what they want to do. Right. Let them do it. But yeah. honestly, auctions and selling records, it predated YouTube. It predated, yeah. uh, you know, there are Facebook groups, there's Instagram right. pages, there's there's so many other avenues. And it, it's just really interesting that in the echo chamber of this vinyl community that we're part of, yeah, uh, some people are just so angry and demonstrative yeah. and, yeah. and name calling and stuff. Controlling, man. They're controlling. Right. Yeah. And, and even to the point, some of the same people we're talking about here, you know, they're having their auctions and there are people who go in to, to deliberately disrupt the proceedings. Just, I, I don't know. So it's hard for me to understand that kind of thought process. Yeah. And that's one thing I want to touch on with too, is that kind of troll mentality, because I don't know about you and we'll kind of get into it in a second. I've, I've had some experience with people who just, they don't like me. Yeah, and I've experienced it in my personal life, and that's fine. Like, you know, again, I'm not a flavor for everybody. Right. I was really taken aback when I started experiencing that on YouTube because my intent, my motivation when I started this channel was just to share and share uh, websites I knew where you could get good vinyl and best practices and learn. And, you know, so I came about it very, what I'd like to think was in a positive fashion. And when you, when you kind of get tripped up on those first trolls or those people who just, they just don't like you. And it, it really, it really, I wouldn't say it shook me for a loop, but it was really hard for me to comprehend because I don't approach it like that. And, you know, you said something earlier I was thinking of because one, there's, there's a certain gentleman who doesn't really care for me to the point where they've created multiple accounts to, you know, give it to me mm -hmm. and make fun of my name and make fun of my appearance and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they did, they did give me a name that is actually quite clever. And I've said it in live streams too, is mm -hmm. instead of concert buddy, they called me concert bidet. And you know what? It was one of those ones where I was like, you know what? Guess what? I got to yeah. cap because I actually laughed the first time I saw it. Now, do I, do I wish it hadn't gotten to that point? Of course. But, but, at, the end of, but at the end of the That's day. That's real shitty of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the long and the short of it is, is that, you know, like exactly what you said, like whatever your motivation is, cool. As long as you're not har harming anybody or being right. uh, malignant or. Uh, or or, or if your motivation is to, you know, rename people you know, and mock them that I don't agree with if that's mm -hmm. your motivation. And, and if, you know, if someone starts doing that, then you just, you just block them, you know, and you just keep blocking them and keep blocking them whenever if they, they, if that's all they have time to do is create new accounts. That's, that's pitiful, man. That is just pathetic. Dude. Oh, I mean, that's awesome. why it's the other thing that we can do as a community when those types of things happen is consider the source, right? You know? Consider who you're dealing with. It's 
it's somebody who's still living in their mommy's basement that has never bought a house, never bought a car, has more records in, in their basement than, you know, any of us combined. But that's where they're stuck because they have no life. They have no motivation. And it's sad that some people, that's what they choose to do with their free time is to make other people's lives miserable. Yeah, it's interesting you said that because when I talked, you brought Robert Fifth in earlier, mm-hmm. and I had him on on the podcast talking about trolls. And he, mm-hmm. he his his day job as he works in, in broadcasting and, and radio, and they actually did a focus group mm-hmm. asking people who had been trolling the station, like brought them in, gave them lunch, yeah. and said, "Why do you do what you do?" And I found it very interesting is that the answers they gave, and I'm I'm you know paraphrasing here, but essentially was they wanted to get a, a reaction. Which, okay, whatever. But they wanted to have a connection. And, you know, you would think that, you know, you and I think agree on this, that, you know, if you want to connect with somebody, you usually want to come about it in a positive way and be like, if it's about music or food or what have you. But these people were just just seeking to get somebody to to reply to them. And just, and I found that very interesting because it's an interesting piece of the human dynamic. I think it's sad because I think they're lonely. Well, right, and they're yeah, they about it lonely, in, man. in a weird way. And again, yeah. no judgment, but yeah, but you know, but you know, when we talked offline about this, when we were talking about doing this conversation, you know, I think that's this this, for lack of a better word, mob mentality, this tribal mentality that's very pervasive in the culture now. You know, there's very, uh, you know, if you don't believe or think what I do exactly, mm-hmm. then I can't talk to you, or I don't right. like you, or I want to generalize with yeah. you. Yeah, it's it's becoming an all or nothing society. You can't have your, you have to have this similar beliefs with like the exact same beliefs, right? Yeah, exact same beliefs with like minded people, or else you are somewhat like an outcast to to a certain group of people, right? But those people might be seen as an outcast to to your group of people. So yeah, it's a shame that it's it's getting more. Everything's becoming more separated. Well, yeah. and it's interesting too because again, when we talked about this, like one of the things that's about any community, not the vinyl community, mm-hmm. food community, what have you, mm-hmm. is that, that that connectivity, and you know, and again, we could we could, we could pontificate about how this thing happened in our culture, but the yeah. long and short of it is, my approach, and sounds like your approach too, is just this should be fun, this should be light, mm-hmm. this should be about sharing, yeah, our, our common common appreciation for different types of music or right. or food or what have you. And yeah. somehow this cult of personality, and, and, and again, you brought it up earlier about, you know, some people just aren't going to get along and that's just yeah. life. But now to the extremes of, and I think too, and tell me what we think about this, the safety behind the keyboard, I call it the keyboard courage, right? Like, yeah. cause like you said earlier, the inflection, the, the tonality, the, even reading body language, even something like this, like we're talking virtually, you can read body language. Yeah. That's all absent when you go into the comment section or whatever and to say, I hate you or this was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's everywhere. And, and again, I, we're not going to solve this problem or anything. Right. Like that, but what, where do you think that comes from? Because you, 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 one thing, I another thing I liked about your videos, just calling for diplomacy. Like you said earlier, mm-hmm. the way you handle any kind of conflict or quarrel is you'd like to be direct. Mm-hmm. How, how do you think? Do we? I think we need more of that, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think people just know how to have to learn how to handle themselves and think their their responses through before you know that knee jerk reaction. You know, you, I mean, you haven't even finished reading the guy's <laughs> slanderous message, and your fingers are already on the keyboard, and you're like, sure. you know, typing back your angry message. You know, I've always, I've learned that, well, I'm 55, so I've learned it many times, um, that you write down what you really, really want to say, and then you wait. Sleep on it, yeah. 24 hours, overnight. And then you come back and you read what you wrote, and I guarantee you, you'll change it every single time. And you'll have been able to find a more diplomatic, non-threatening way to get to convey your message back to that person that might just resolve the matter on, on a peaceful level, you know? So more people need to, to learn how to do that and, and it'll benefit them as a whole. I'm not just the person on the other end, but it'll make them feel better about themselves, you know? 
Yeah, you talk about. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. Go ahead. No, it's, it's a hard thing to do. You know, it's like that the old saying about when you're when you're married, you're not supposed to go to bed mad, right? Well, you've seen that meme where that couple is like they've been up for 36 hours because they took somebody's <laughs> advice not to go to bed mad, and so they haven't gone to bed for like three days. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, it's funny you say that, and and I'm going to say this, and hope nobody gets offended, but you know, I always remember that one saying: they're like, keep. Oh, keep, someone's going to get offended, Chance. Well, it's inevitable, <laughs> and I'm sure people are going to kill me in the comments, on this one, but. But, you know, I always think about it, particularly marriage, right? I yeah. remember that saying someone told me a long time ago is keep the sex dirty and keep the fights clean. <laughs> and, okay. and listen, I mean, it, it, it's a little from- barbaric, but honestly, like, especially the fighting piece. Let's just lean on the fighting piece. Yeah. because You know, obviously it's your partner, your spouse. Like, mm-hmm. try to keep a level head. There's a, there's always that line that you just know you can't cross. Sometimes we do it right. in the battle. But yeah. even to a lesser extent, the stuff we're doing, yeah. two-dimensional YouTube right. stuff. Who, who's that? Who who wrote that that coined that phrase? Um, a gentleman in the streets and the freak in the sheets. Who who, who coined that? I know that's a hip hop or a rap artist from like. I'm, I'm just gonna give it to Rick James because Rick James <laughs> started yeah. everything, right? Um, he's a freak, right? Well, well, one thing you talked about too, but uh, circling back to the you know why people do what they do. Yeah, yeah, and and particularly about this YouTube stuff, and you know, like again, people people should be free to make the videos they want to. You and I yep. definitely align on that. But, you know, you did bring up a point about competition. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just human nature. A lot of these things are just human nature, right? And I do think that there is a comparing yourself. Because I know when I started my channel and, you know, you see another channel, get mm-hmm. more subs, reviews, or what have you. You know, again, you're not really yeah. measuring, but you're trying to better understand. Right. How, do you, how much do you think competition, and I'm going to throw the J word out there, jealousy, uh-huh. comes into some of these interpersonal uh, retorts, responses, the – the cult of person, the, the personality conflicts. How much do you think that has to play with it? Mm, uh, everything, yeah, because first of all, there's not a. I, I think the majority of people that are on here, if you're taking the time to get in front of a camera and talk to total strangers, you're hoping that somebody's going to watch. And we're all self-esteem whores when it comes down to <laughs> to it. You know, we all want to continue to boost our self-esteem um very few people i mean i know i wasn't uh one who was instilled with a whole bunch of it because you know sometimes we have fathers that don't you know maybe give us the right type of self-esteem but we have a mother that does so everybody has their their issues growing up you know some of them are horrendous mine wasn't bad but it was enough to to kind of you know interfere with my confidence um early on but later on, you become an adult and you learn that you have to make your own way and you got to put your past behind you. You know, Shut up and drink like the rest of us. Just move on with your life. You know, Quit com- blaming your parents and your upbringing and your childhood. But people ultimately want to connect with other people. Yeah. And they, they want to be liked. They, yeah, I mean, I can't tell me how many times when, when I get compliments – People say nice things about me. It feels feels wonderful. It feels great. I mean, I'm not going to lie. When I don't get a big response, yeah, I'm like, gosh, man, what, what's what's the matter with these people? <laughs> I mean, how come they didn't like? I thought that was really cool. And that's another thing that you have to learn is not everybody's going to like your stuff. Right. So you know, don't be hard on yourself. Don't be hard on the community. Just know that you got to try again with something different. You know, but everybody's here to become a celebrity. I know deep down in in a lot of these individuals' hearts, they want to be somewhat of a celebrity or else they wouldn't be sitting in front of a camera recording themselves, trying to sound smart, whether they're doing it with a teleprompter, with the computers in front of them, or they're just winging it like me, you know, tripping all over my tongue because I, I don't know everything and I don't always go on, completely prepared or have my notes or anything. I'm just flying by, by the seat of my pants, you know, um, because I'm not, I'm not afraid to I'm not hide anything. I'm not trying to be somebody that I'm not, sure. but I think people ultimately see somebody who's really successful and they do really well and they're great on camera. They've got charisma. It's professional. They have all that. And then they're like, ah, you know, and, or they're showing like they're constantly getting amazing records, you know, first pressings this, first pressings that. 
and it looks like they're just showing off and you you don't have that type of stuff and you know so they get jealous or or people that there's just so much competitiveness in the in the vinyl community with who has what who knows what mm -hmm. and you know that's everybody i think wants a chance just to be looked at as someone who is um uh held in high regards you know um i really think that's that's why people are here is for their own well-being first and foremost and then secondly maybe maybe to educate people because yeah. i but anybody that tells you that they're just here to educate people it's not about them dude i'm sorry i I don't know that they're all telling the truth. I'm not going to say they're all lying because that's right, 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 right. But maybe, maybe there's some self awareness missing. Yeah. There. Last I checked, I haven't seen Gandhi on in the vinyl community. Yeah. <laughs> Let me introduce you to somebody. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, the uh, no, you raise a point earlier too about that in terms of um, you know this for you mm -hmm. is an extension of creativity, be it in food, be it in the music you listen to. Yeah. I, I completely empathize with that because. You know, my nine to five job is my nine to five job and it has a lot of value and it yeah. provides me a nice living and, and all these things. Yeah. But there there is a piece that I, I noticed and that's one of that was one of my motivations, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. to start doing this was I wanted to scratch that creative itch. For a while I thought maybe I want to do copywriting or I want to do something. Mm -hmm. I think there's a little piece of that too. But but the long and the short of it was that was something that was and I found too, like you're talking about learning, like you're doing your videos vertically. Yeah. I'm like, I've learned so much from doing this. Yeah. And just how to do live streams, how to do edits, right. how to do all right. this stuff that I think the value add, you know, if I stop this tomorrow, which believe it or not, I think about this more than I probably should admit, because sometimes, you know, if you, if you get that one comment and you're just like, what's this person's problem? Because yeah, I'd like to be, I'd like to be honest and say, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people who just, just goes on by, but I think it's human nature to be like, to analyze, like you said earlier, and be like, did I do something here or is this on them? And even if it's on them, yeah. still, you, you just, it, it, some of them are very strange and we don't need to legislate those. But yeah, in terms of just why you're here, right? Creativity piece is important, but you're, you're right. The competition port, you know, I, I, you can go about it two ways. You can either get really angry. Yeah. Like we were talking about with why is that channel more successful? I'm using quotation marks. Yeah. Or, you can learn and, and, you know, what's that, what's that saying? Uh, uh, genius, uh, talent steals genius. Uh, no talent borrows genius steals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you see something somebody else is doing, take it. Yeah. Give them credit. Right. <laughs> right. Take it, right? So right. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's really an interesting dichotomy of how human nature has bled into this. And of course it's natural, but um, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, this video, it says a lot of things and hopefully, you know, by having this conversation, your video in and of itself, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other people that feel the exact same way. What kind of feedback, yeah. let's talk about that. What kind of feedback did you get from the community after this video? Um, oh, after the video that I, that I did about the uh, unity and in, in community. Yes. Um, I got a few comments that were positive. I didn't get any negative comments Good. from that, but the, um, the amount of views, I think it only has like, again, this is where I question, is it something that I'm doing wrong? You know, this is all part of knowing the ins and outs of YouTube. Um, how to, I mean, are some people doing something? Because I don't get it. Some people do videos and they get, they have like 3000 views on their video. And I watched the video and I'm like, this was like a, you know, like an egg that someone sucked the entire yolk and white out from the bottom it was empty i didn't learn anything from this video right. how did they get three thousand videos and they only have 300 200 subscribers and you know i i see that a lot and then i see guys that have the same amount of subscribers that i do and their their view count is much higher and i'm thinking to myself you know again you question yourself i'm like is my content that crappy you know, I mean, I'm I'm doing what a lot of these other guys are doing. Sometimes I'm doing, I'm sharing the same information that they share, but maybe different artists or different, you know, part of that genre. Mm -hmm. But I just, I wonder sometimes. Um, I, I think I might. I'm hoping I didn't get off track. Your your question uh, was so. I wanted to touch upon monetization. Sure. People are here to monetize. 
I didn't realize that I could do that until, you know, later on, maybe a year or two after. I'm like, what's monetized? How do you, you know, you can make money on YouTube? And when I found that out, I'm like, hey, that's a goal for me because I'm five years away from retiring and moving to my place in New Mexico where I'm going to be in, in heaven. And I want to, by then, have cultivated a channel that I can, you know, like make a make some extra income, you know, on top of my 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 retirement. Um, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, I I'm I'm set up to monetize right now, and a lot of people don't know this, but I have, I think I might have uh, more views um, on one or two of my videos than, than most people in the vinyl community have. I've got like sixty thousand views. Wow. On one of my videos that's about cooking and that's because I, I make some of the best tamales that you have ever tasted chance trust me it's a five generation year old recipe that i have taken to a whole new level mm. with my way of cooking and and i've infused different flavors and i mean they're delicious and i did a video on that on how to make them from scratch mm -hmm. and that's like my top video um, some of my other videos are 20,000 views, 15,000 views, but they're all the food related videos. And so like right now I'm monetizing, I think I'm up to 10, $11 and 47 cents, you know, Oh, but, big but buck, hey, big buck. I know, I'm, don't let anybody know. I might have somebody, you know, breaking into my house. Um, <laughs> the auditors are coming tomorrow. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> but you know, the goal is to ultimately learn how to cultivate that, and to make it some extra income. I mean, yeah, it's all right. about getting the content up, getting the views, getting people to like your content, and they're benefiting from it, and then so are you. So I have no problem with people making money on YouTube. I'm, that's it's the American way. I mean, that's we're all here to do it. Now it's just kind of gravitating towards technology versus, mm -hmm. you know, selling tamales on the street corner. Do you think, uh, we hit on a little bit, but the monetization made me kind of think of this. Do you think... The monetization is a form of validation. You know, can we get direct validation yeah. from our viewers and, and their comments and if you know, people reach out, et cetera? Do you feel the monetization? Because I, I mean, I'm spoiler alert, I do. Only yeah. in the sense of you are spending your your time, you're investing time, energy, resources, yeah. even mm -hmm. if it's $10 or it's 10 cents. Mm -hmm. There is, it's human nature. There is at least a, seeing something of that return. Do you think that the monetization is a form of validation? And I don't know. For me, it, uh, it's just I like to make money. I mean, I, <laughs> I made. I read a book. I read a book when I was about 22 years old called "Multiple Streams of Income" by Robert G. Allen. And um, so I, I spent 20 years in the real estate business. That was my my one and only profession. I was self-employed my whole life, collecting records all through that time. Okay. I opened up a record store in like oh. 2014. I had like 75,000 records wow. in store. Nobody knew about that but me. I opened my store. It was called The Record Mission. It was in Ontario, California, the Inland Empire. It was the hottest thing, man, back then. And it did really well, but it kicked my ass. I told my wife, I want to get out of the real estate business. I've been busting my ass all these years. I don't see weekends. People call me at night. You know, I'm working seven days a week. And so I finally just said, I'm done. You know, I got out of it, took a year off. And she was on board with me doing that. It was a bucket list thing. Huh. I opened it up. It was so cool, Chet. Oh, man, Chance. It was the most amazing thing, experience that I've ever had. I had a vision of what I wanted it to be like. That's exactly what it turned out to be. My record shelving were antique church pews that were elevated, and that's where my records were in like that. And they were divided by um, like this thick of records that I had that had no covers that were all, you know, oh, sure, just put sure. together. Yep. So it was all genred out. It, it just, it was an amazing place. Um, and I got out of that, sold that cause that kicked my butt. I didn't realize how hard that was going to be. <laughs> hard. And, yeah. yeah. Because you get into a business where, um, there's the market was coming back. So there's now there's more people. And my business back then was based on, vintage records you know sure. og stuff i hadn't even tapped into the reissue market because i didn't want to i didn't i was anti reissue at that point right mm -hmm. it was like 10 15 or 10 12 years ago um so i kind of neglected that and 
having to find records when there's more people out there looking for them now. And, you know, they're already in short supply. They're not, you know, coming out of the woodworks more. Right. It's just more people out there getting to them before you could. Competition, that's right. So yeah. it was very, very difficult. So I finally just burned out on that. I didn't even like listening to records anymore. And I'm like, oh, my hobby's become a job. So mm, tough, I yeah. Up, yeah, I went I went to wine school and became a sommelier. So now I'm a wine som at a boutique bougie liquor store out here five minutes from my house. Oh. Um, oh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that people that want to make money want to make money doesn't monetizing doesn't make me feel better about myself it just makes me feel like i'm i'm not wasting my time that my my time i'm being compensated for my time and my right. knowledge efforts to entertain other to entertain people and 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 educate them and somehow you know well steve we're coming up on time but i appreciate hey man the time i really enjoyed this and like i said you know it was just one of those kind of um uh, they call it serendipitous things that you know yeah. i saw the video and it really resonated with me on it because i had been thinking and and uh, really honing in on some of this, this shared themes and constructs mm -hmm. that you shared in your video. And I'll yeah. have, you know, if in the show notes, if you listen to this on the audio version or you're watching this mm -hmm. on my channel, I'll have show notes to link to Steve's channel and this video. Cause I think, I think it's an important video to watch only in the sense of you might feel the same way too. And if anything else, if you watch this video or listen to this conversation or what have you, and it just makes you think about, Hey, next time, next time you want to fire off that email or fire off that comment, yeah. You know, hey, sit on it, buddy. Sit on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, remember, remember the old saying, stop, drop, and roll? Yes. Well, stop, drink, and think. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> if, if, if that's not a t shirt, Steve, I don't know what it is. Stop, drink, and think. <laughs> yeah, man. Before you start, you know, lashing out at people. That's good stuff. So, well, oh, I'm glad that, that we were able to to come to, you know, we came to a crossroads, but then we were on the same path. We had the same goal, and uh, yeah, you're you're a fine young man, Chance. I'm oh, listen, don't tell anybody. I got, I, got, I got a reputation. A chance to me, I never. I I don't see a mean streak in you. You've never been malicious or like aggressive towards anybody. So just again, remember, consider the source. The people that come after you, just you know, feel for them more than you feel for yourself. hundred percent. And, and, you know, I always think we have this thing hanging in our, our bathroom upstairs here that says, um, you know, just, just be kind. Yeah. It, it's all you have to do. Cause you know what, you know how much that costs talking about money? Nothing. Costs yeah. nothing. Yeah. It really doesn't. Like you're talking about, you know, the, the, the schoolmate, you're not keeping up with you and stuff. Like right. it's so easy. Anyway, we could talk, we could have a whole nother conversation. Yeah. That kind of thing. But final chef, Steve, check out the channel. I have all the information in the show notes. Pleasure talking to you. And like I said, we started out in a not cool place and we found yeah. common ground. Anybody can do it. If, if Concert yeah. Buddy and Vinyl Chef Steve can do it, you can do it too. So thanks yeah. for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Chance. And that was another trip around the turntable. Thanks for listening to Vinyl Community Podcasts.